Hello and welcome back to the Not Road Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Here to review the weekend's action. Obviously, only three games that were going on, but me and James will take a look back on what happened over the weekend in Scotland's top flight, as well as hearing from Premiership managers and players along the way. Three results that happened, two on the Saturday, one on the Sunday. Starting with the Saturday, it was Dundee United coming out on top against Ross County, winning that one by slender margins. Nicky Clark getting the opener. Ross County not really showing much signs, being in a bit of poor form of late. Um, but Dundee United eventually getting a much needed victory in that one, winning 2 1. Don't know if you've seen them, we'll talk about it a bit later. I don't know if you've seen Ian Vigers with his handball from that, but that is definitely one of the top points of the game. Um, so that was one of the games on the Saturday. And the other one, Livingston versus Motherwell. Livingston perhaps just getting a wee bit away from the ugly side of the game, they're doing well, getting caught between playing ugly and playing nice, according to Gary Holt as Mullow came away with an impressive 2-0 victory at the Spaghetti Hand. Tony Watt got the second one to seal things, but first of all, Callum Lyons' goal was brilliant. Devante Cole playing in him, and a couple of nice wee shimmies, if I can say that correctly, and then into the bottom corner, his finish went. And then on the Sunday, Kilmarnock now Rangers won a James Tavernier penalty early on, settling things there. Kilmarnock playing fairly well during the game. What was that face for? I just seen Ian Vigor's handball. Wow. Well, there you go. You've got live reaction to Ian Vigor's handball. But yes, Kilmarnock just coming short against Rangers. Um, so we'll look, look back on the action. Uh, start with Dundee United, Ross County. Now that you've just seen Ian Vigor's handball, what did you think of it? Never a penalty. And whoever gave that should, should be appalled at Really? Referee. What do you mean? In what, in what universe is that deliberate? But it's not deliberate this season, but it, it does yeah, not. It's still for, it is still for defenders. I, I don't... I, Pretty, the, 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 hand, the handball rule was split into two this season. Any contact by an attacking player results in the play being stopped, deliberate or not. For a defender, it must still be like the deliberate, the usual, the hands out with the natural silhouette and it's got to be a deliberate movement. He, even if we want to avoid all that, he's caught it and jammed it with his arm. But that's more just that he's, he's completely... Caught out with the bounce of the ball. It's, I've, it's comic cut stuff. Like it's, if anything, it, it's more. It encapsulates how ridiculous Scottish football can be at times, and that two players go to clear what should be a very, very, very simple clear, and somehow the ball winds up in Ian Vigors' his hip pocket. Yeah. It did um, set Dundee United on their way to a 2-1 victory. Um, again, Ross County started well. We sang their praises, especially in the early pre uh, review and preview shows we did, but now it's been a bit tough for them. They are starting to slide down that table a wee bit, probably just as well they had that early form because now you're looking at it, 13 games played for them, three wins, three draws, seven defeats, and they now sit just a point above Livingston in 10th and they are, I think, they're still comfortably above looking at the league table as it stands and now five points above St Mirren and Ackies in 11th and 12th but St Mirren have got three games in hand on Ross County, Ackies have got two, so they well, did. I expect those St Mirren games, however, will likely become 0-3 forfeit It's likely, but I mean, with, as it stands, I don't know, um, Stephen Robinson saying last week that Mullow, in terms of Mullow St Mirren, they've had absolutely no work on what's happening with that at all, whether that's re getting rescheduled or not. I think they hate well, 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 the 11th of November. They won't find anything out until the SPFL do their disciplinary and they St Mirren. Uh, they'll get it after that. But, yeah, no, so Ross County did start well this season and it's probably fair to say they were punching above their weight a little bit. Uh, Kettlewell was done, he's done a really good job there and he's got his side well organised and kind of well set up but I think sometimes it's it's less the the shape and the formation that's going to catch them just it's the, the golf and quality of a player or quality of players available I think there's something just seeing that Ross County are probably still one of these sides who are on paper you'd probably group them as being like a, a high championship low premiership level Rather than like even something like a Dundee United who should probably be a kind of mid-table Premiership team, just kind of on the 
players they have available. Uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be a, a case of getting kind of more than some of their parts out of this side and hoping that the likes of St. Lern and Hamilton don't pick up runs and get kind of good points on the board. Dundee and England fairly criticised both on the park and off it recently, or talking about on the park specifically, they've had their critics in recent weeks not really having much going forward, but they are still fifth, so even though performances aren't great, I mean, they're still doing enough result-wise to get them into that top six. No, absolutely, and that's that's a key thing just now. It's, I know people are always going to be performances and how fans want to see good free flowing attacking football. End of the day, if you win every game 1-0, you're going to be champions. You don't get anything extra for playing lovely attacking free flowing football. Three points is three points. Uh, so anyway, that was that one at Tanadice in West Lothian, Livingston nil, Motherwell two. Contrast emotions for the managers at the end of the game. Gary Holt forced out in his interview saying, I'll keep the swear words to myself. I think that just about summed up his thoughts on the game. Stephen Robinson obviously delighted with how his side, a side that has been battered by injuries, especially at the back. I think there's six or seven players out, not just with wee niggly injuries, but proper long-term knee injuries and such like. But a good result for them nonetheless. Mullow are picking up a bit of form and Stephen Robinson and Gary Holt have reacted to the 2-0 Mullow win against Livingston on Saturday. I said earlier we've won four out of five now, um, and we haven't conceded a goal in those four games that we've we've won. So you know, good results are built on a, a solid defensive line, and I think today Declan Gallagher, Mark O'Hara, the whole back four were outstanding. And we had at times when we needed it real quality up front, especially our, our first goal, and probably could have been three or four at half time. But um, second half, real disciplined, professional performance from the boys. Yeah, we've you know we won't look at the table too much at the moment. We didn't look at it too much early on in the season when we weren't getting the points that our our performances deserved, and, and everyone was saying there was a mad crisis. We never believed that, and we certainly don't believe we're the finished article now. We've won four out of five. We've lots to improve on, lots to keep learning on, and as I say, hopefully a little bit of luck turns our way with injuries. That must be really positive for you then that you've still got lots to work on, but positive performances on the park. Lots to work on and lots of players to come back. You know, hopefully in the next few weeks we'll we'll have Ricky back and uh, Grimmy back and Bevis back from a shoulder as well, and then further down the line Jake Carroll as well, which I think gives us a really strong spot. Uh, the next few games we just need to try and get through. Um, the one before the international break is obviously a tough one, and then we, we try and see where we are numbers wise. But yeah, really pleased in aspects today. I, I thought the team as a whole played very very well. Played to the conditions. It's too easy for me to stand here and say well. Play well and goals today, but didn't really play well. And you can see the two sort of goals. Aye, probably because I think we've been, and I've talked enough before, and especially this week, we've played well, we've played really well, and had good spells of games. It's not going to be a pretty good, it's not going to be a passing ball and move, and um, and she can play because second balls are going to be set up for the same game. Good win for Mullow. They had their critics at the start of the season, perhaps lose dropping points in games they shouldn't have, a like home game against Livingston, defeat to Ackies and Dundee United at home, but have now in recent weeks really started picking up form, I think. I mean, if you look at Mullow's recent results, I mean, they got the 4-0 victory over Ross County last week, 2-0 win over uh, Livingston at the weekend. But apart from that, their only real defeats recently have came at Parkhead against Hapoel, Albertreva away in Israel, who are now in the Europa League group stages, and then Rangers as well, who have been dominant in the league. Apart from that, recently they've had victories over the likes of Aberdeen at Pataudry, St Johnston. They're going up. I mean, when they're playing teams, they're now starting to do what Mull did last season, where whilst perhaps they're falling a wee bit short against the teams with bigger budgets, all that said, they did beat Aberdeen, but against the likes of Celtic and Rangers, perhaps just coming up short. In the games against your Livingstons, Hamiltons, they seem to be doing a bit better now, and that looks like where they're going to get a lot of their points from, and that's what took them into third early on last season. Yeah, I, I think that's just a key thing for my role just now. It's a case of getting a good run of results together and kind of forgetting about that 
really poor on the form at the start of the season. Uh, I don't think anybody can doubt the quality of players that Robinson's got at his disposal. You look at some of the guys at Fur Park, and he's got some of the, some of the best young players in the country on his side. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a massive fan of Alan Campbell. Um, there's a few other boys there that are like really, really talented young players. Yeah. All right, some of the injuries have probably hit them a bit harder than you'd have hoped for. I think losing Trevor Carson's a massive one. Uh, to be fair, see, to be fair, I don't know if you've watched the, the highlights of Aaron Chapman. They've signed Jordan Archer as well, Mullo, which for him and Jordan Archer, I mean, I know Jordan Archer has some of his critics when he gets called up to the Scotland squad, but he's a goalkeeper with over 150 appearances at Championship and League One level. To get him at this stage in the season is great, but they had Aaron Chapman in goals on Saturday. I don't know if you've seen it. He's six foot eight. I was interviewing him at the end, which <laughs> shortly. Um, I'm five foot eight. He is about six foot eight. So I'm interviewing him, looking up at the sky like that. But he was getting the ball on his goal line and just throwing it into the wind, 75 yards. He was throwing it. He was throwing it longer than Livingston were able to kick it. And absolutely, he looked really solid. So I think Trevor Carson, as you say, is a big blow. But I mean, they look to have had two solid replacements in. I think more with Carson, it's about the experience that he brings as well, though. Mm-hmm. When we're talking about a guy who's been there and done pretty much everything that you're going at, at that kind of level in his career, he's, he's very much known for the course. He's played international football, he's played European football, he's pretty much seen everything at club level. So yeah, losing somebody like him, especially when you're just coming off that kind of bad runner form, You've got somebody that you know exactly what he's all about. He, he's not somebody that's maybe a bit of a surprise package. Like I'll use Jordan Archer as an example. I, I don't know like a huge amount about him off the pitch, but Carson's somebody that you know that if results start to turn again, and you know Mother will start going through maybe three, four, five defeats in the bounce. Carson's head's not going to go down. He's not going to kind of start going, oh, well, I'm, I'm a bit to blame here. I'm making mistakes. And start beating himself up too hard on things that might not be his doing. So I think losing somebody with that mentality and that, that kind of mental strength and just that experience all around is a, a huge blow for Motherwell. Right, well, that was obviously things to improve upon for Livingston. They'll be disappointed. Livingston usually very solid at home. But have now lost to Hibbs, Kelly, Hamilton, and now Mullow at home. So they'll be looking to rectify that in a few weeks uh, when they next get the opportunity to do so. They did have a wee bit of form, but are now looking to, they'll need to pick it back up somewhere soon. Um, but also, talking about Mullow goalkeepers, did hear from Aaron Chapman at the end, and this is what he had to say after his first start in Claret and Amber. The wind helped us a little bit, and the second half it was the opposite and as you can see that's where they had a lot of the ball and how they like to play they like to put the ball in the box and that's what they did and the wind helped. Are you surprised that the second half you, you didn't really get as much called upon as you might have thought I think the end of the wind you might have given a hairy second half here. Just put that down to the boys in front of me. Right. It makes my lot, job a lot easier when they're just heading the ball back out of the box so all fair to me. Like I said it's great to the boys. Right. You, you see how hard they've been working and they, they do that every day in training and they, Gradually, um, shows on the pitch. Yeah, and I didn't expect it to happen after half an hour either. Yeah, yeah which um, I just want to take my chance now. I've come up here to challenge, and hopefully, I've got a chance now. Well, he's, he's a lovely guy. I've only met him once. Obviously, when I came in, he was on international duty. He's been nothing but brilliant for me. He's like, she, obviously, he's one of the lads. I'm sure everyone loves him. He, te- he gives me a text every now and again saying, uh, like, "Good luck stuff." So, which is. <laughs> 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 Uh, this is a club that's in a good platform, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, the, the whole league's a good platform and it's a great club as well. So hopefully I can um, have some of them, some of the people that have been here in the past. Just in case um, football doesn't work out for you, is NFL a potential reasoning for you? He's not seen me run, have you? <laughs> <laughs> On the Sunday, there was one game, Kilmarnock versus Rangers, fortunate enough to be at that again. Um, and heard from Alex Dyer at the end of it. Not a bad performance from Kilmarnock, fairly solid. They made things uncomfortable for Rangers, but in the end, Rangers were just a bit too much. And this is what the Kilmarnock boss had to say at the end of the game. Yeah, it would have been nice to get get something out of the game. I don't think we did enough to win the game. But maybe did enough to maybe get a point. Um, but obviously, you're coming up against a good side or on a good run. 
So, um, like I said, first start, we didn't, we weren't at the races, especially the first 30 minutes of the game. After that, towards the end of the first half, we got back into it a little bit. I had a few things out at half time, and second half we were a lot better. Well, always, you know, they always give 100%, they're a good bunch in there. Um, and if we keep doing that and keep working hard for each other, we'll be alright in the league. I, know, I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. Um, I think we showed them a little bit too much respect um, at the start. But like I said, if we go gun hole against them, we'll get picked off. So. It's important to try and find a balance. We found a balance in the second half, um, and uh, I, was, I was a lot happier. And they were, they enjoyed the game in the second half because they had more of the ball, they passed the ball better. Um, so, yeah, overall, disappointed with the result. I mean, it was, I thought Kilmarnock did well in defence. I, th I think, by the looks of it, from where I was sitting in the stand, it looked like they were 4 5 1 at the back, 4 3 3 going forward. But in the end, Eamon Brophy's free kick at the end was a really good save by Alan McGregor. I thought that was a really big moment in the game. Just with the conditions and stuff, Alan McGregor made a really good stop to save that. But Rangers were never really under lots of intense attack pressure. I didn't think Kilmarnock could... Even though it was a good performance from Kilmarnock overall, I think they just missed a wee bit in the final. That was very much a Kilmarnock performance. I, I told you I was expecting. It wasn't the kind of the more open and attacking Roman we'd seen in recent weeks, and it was just kind of back to the wall, damage limitation stuff. Um, I thought Rangers were comfortable throughout that though. Um, that looked it never looked like a game Rangers were going to lose. Um, I don't even think it really looked like a game that Roman were going to get a point from. If I'm being honest, I think especially after Rangers took the lead, it was always just a case of. Can Coman keep it at one? But yeah, no, it's yeah. free hat for Coman, I suppose. So yeah, they'll move on, go to the next game, and kind of look to get back to what they've been doing well in recent weeks. Mm, yeah, I think Alex Tyre said at the end, he doesn't think they merited a win, maybe a point. Perhaps teams couldn't have complained at the end of the day. I think he was well aware of what his side were up against, but. And that was all the action over the weekend. A shot and champion uh, premiership, sorry. Um, card of fixtures. Plenty of championship content went out on the website over the weekend. We had, first of all, a Sean Byrne exclusive interview, which is available on the channel, as well as plenty of coverage from all but one of the championship games. So do check that out on our website. We've had Scottish Cup action going on over the weekend. We had reports on the games, as well as a review of the action. So that's on YouTube and our website as well. Coming up this week as well, we've obviously got our usual preview and review stuff as well as an exclusive interview with Hibs defender Tom James, currently on loan at Wigan. Will he come back to Hibs in January? He's only on loan at Wigan until the winter window opens again, or will he be staying at Wigan in League One for the time being after that? Tune into that one and you'll find out the answer. But until next time, take it easy.